Welcome! This video demonstration will show you how to determine the work output or power output from a steam turbine using the Moyer diagram. At the end of this demonstration, you should be able to do the following five objectives. You should be able to define some common terminologies associated with the Moyer diagram. You must get familiarized with the purpose of the Moyer diagram. Understand the relevant equations used to calculate the power and work done of a steam turbine. How to read the Moyer diagram. And lastly, you will be introduced to a work example to further enhance your understanding of the Moyer diagram. So let us start, shall we? First, definitions of terminologies. What is enthalpy and entropy? Enthalpy is the measure of total energy in a thermodynamic system. Entropy is the measure of the microscopic disorder of a substance. Next, power and work. Power, the rate at which energy is being transferred. Work, amount of energy transferred from one system to another. Isoenthalpic and isoentropic. An isoenthalpic system is a system where enthalpy is constant. On the other hand, an isoentropic system is a system where entropy is constant. So now having defined all these terms, what is the purpose of the Moyer diagram? In our course of study, we need to use the Moyer diagram to determine the work done and power of a steam turbine by finding the entropy and enthalpy in the system. So now, we are going to look at the relevant equations to calculate work done and power of a steam turbine. These equations are divided into ideal and non-ideal. Ideal equations are ones that deal with 100% steam turbine efficiency. On the other hand, non-ideal equations deal with a certain percentage of efficiency. We have to remember that in real-life situations, there is no such thing as 100% efficiency. As you can see from the table, for an isoentropic system, the equations for ideal and non-ideal are similar. The only difference is that for non-ideal conditions, we have to multiply both power and work done equations with efficiency. As for an isoenthalpic system, the enthalpy at the inlet and the exhaust is essentially constant for both ideal and non-ideal conditions. As a result, the power and work done for both systems is zero. In the equation, H represents enthalpy. So now, we are going to teach you how to read the Molias diagram. But first, you have to get familiar with various lines on the diagram. Saturation line. Points situated on this line shows that the liquid is boiling. Constant moisture line. Lines going in this direction shows the constant moisture of the exhaust fluid. Constant pressure line. Lines going in this direction shows the absolute pressure of the fluid. Constant temperature line. Lines going in this direction shows the temperature of the fluid. Entropy line. Along at this vertical line, the entropy of the particular system can be read at the end of the line. Enthalpy line. Along at this horizontal line, the enthalpy of the particular system can be read at the end of the line. So now that you know how to read the Moller's diagram, let's enhance our understanding by doing a worked example. A steam turbine has a rated power output of 30,000 kilowatts and a mass flow rate of 26.4 kg per second. The steam exhausts into a condenser at 0.12 bars absolute and a moisture content of 18%. Provided that the system is ideal, determine the following specific enthalpies of inlet and exhaust steam, and inlet steam pressure and temperature.
It is always a good step to write down all the parameters given in the question, followed by the relevant equations. These are the parameters given. In this particular question, we have to write down the equation for power. We know that power is the product of mass flow rate, the difference in enthalpy and the efficiency. Since it is given that the system is ideal, then the efficiency will have a value of 1. Given that the power is 30,000 kilowatts and the mass flow rate is 26.4 kg per second, we can use the equation for power to find the difference in enthalpy, which turns out to be 1,136 kilojoules per kg. We also know that the exhaust pressure is 0.12 bars and the constant moisture is 18%. Using all this information, we can now use the Molier's diagram. For each parameter, trace and highlight the lines of given parameters. From the intersection point, draw a horizontal line to determine the exhaust enthalpy, which turns out to be 2160 kilojoules per kg. And since we already know the difference in enthalpy, we can now find the enthalpy at the inlet, which is 3296 kilojoules per kg. And now, we are left with finding the inlet steam pressure and temperature. We can do this by finding the entropy. In this particular case, the system is isoentropic. This means that the entropy at the inlet is the same as the entropy at the exhaust. Referring back to the Molier's diagram, since the system is isoentropic, we would need to draw a vertical line at the intersection to determine the entropy of the system. In this case, the entropy is 6.7 kJ per kg Kelvin. I like the enthalpy line at 3,296 kilojoules per kg, which is the inlet enthalpy. At the intersection, I like the temperature line and pressure line. In this case, the pressure is 60 bars absolute and the temperature is 450 degrees Celsius. And with that, we have now come to the end of our video demonstration. We hope you will have a better understanding of how to calculate work and power of a steam turbine using the Molios diagram.